after the, it's nice to know that whatever your age, uh, you still act as a school child when you come into a lecture theatre and fill up from the back and suddenly there's a hush descends as if someone's got something important to say and I'm afraid that's not the case. But um, a very warm welcome to uh, Brighton College from uh, the college and from me, Paul Westbrook, the bursar. It's a good start. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got to go. Uh, it's very important. Um, that's just a reminder that perhaps if you would turn off your mobile phones, um, that would be very helpful. I just want to say a quick thank you to Rebecca Findlay and her team for organising the event for the college this evening. And also a thank you to Sprunt, Centurion and the Brighton and Hove Economic Partnership for putting on this event, which will enable the council to share with us their vision for the next few years. So thank you uh, on behalf of everyone present. Um, you'll see, in, in, as part of our warm welcome, that we put the flags out for you. Um, and uh, where you were uh, enjoying a little aperitif earlier on is our latest addition to the campus. Um, that is a, a wonderful addition for our pastoral um, side of the, the school, with the cafe available for the pupils in the evenings and during the day. Uh, it was designed, the interior design was by a local Brighton firm, DDSB, who also kitted out Terminal 5 and uh, JFK uh, is in process of being kitted out by them. They've done a wonderful job. Um, I was a bit against, as the bursar, I was a bit against spending any money at all on it, of course. But um, I um, argued against the glitter balls, but one of them said that uh, a cafe without glitter balls was just an office. <laughs> and so I backed down. The, um, the site of that particular um, building is the old brewery and uh, if on a Friday afternoon you were to creep upstairs to the staff common room where the teachers are, you'll see that they pay tribute to <laughs> that previous usage of the site. Um, a very warm welcome to Brighton College. As I said, we welcome in particular to the council and thank you for sharing with us your views on how you will enable Brighton to improve, Brighton and Hove to improve. Uh, over the next few years. The title of this afternoon's um, uh, discussion is Generating Future Investment in Brighton and Hove. And I had a look through the 200-page document. I can't claim to have uh, absorbed it all, but it strikes me that the agenda it will cover growth, job creation, inward investment, sustainable development, celebrating our heritage and encouraging sport and culture as part of an attractive city and also uh, a large amount of that of course with community engagement and I reflected on what it is that we do at the college and it's no real surprise to find that actually our agenda is exactly the same as that of the council and so I hope that our relations with the council which hitherto have been excellent of course will continue to remain so. Um, specifically on the growth agenda, um, Brighton College has done incredibly well over the last few years. Um, this is the pupil numbers uh, in our three schools that uh, uh, live alongside uh, Eastern Road here. We uh, teach 3 to 18 year olds who are boys and girls. Um, we have 933 children from Brighton and Hove itself in our schools. We have 344 from other uh, BN postcodes and we are also a home and a hotel for 300 or so boarders um, so we have to make sure that their interests are looked after but that's an interesting part of what the college is about and also how it works in its own export market which I'll come on to in a few minutes. We spend at least 15 million pounds in the local economy through paying salaries that are then spent in the area or directly and uh, those, of you that, those of you that think that charities don't pay any tax are, are, are greatly mistaken. Of course, the revenue takes its fair share through PAYE and NI. So we contribute, I think, reasonably well to the local economy. On the subject of job creation, we have 400 employees, full-time and part-time, which I think makes us third largest private uh, business headquartered in the city after Amex and uh, Brighton and Hove Bus Company. And we have also worked very hard in the last few years to ensure other schools that were experiencing difficulties were able to come out of them by investing into them. St Christopher's and Hove we got involved with a long time ago before my time and that is a very, very successful school over on the west side of Patch. Hancross Park on, in North Sussex uh, had one border when we got involved. Now I don't know 
uh, as a parent who sends one child to a school to board. Um, but I felt quite sorry for that child and I thought there's more we could do for him and uh, he's now accompanied by 30 other children as a result of our involvement um, and Rodin's Junior School which they acquired from St Mary's uh, had 40 children um, at this time last year and it's now got 210 uh, as a result of us taking it over and filling it. Um, we encourage inward investment into Brighton. 9% of our pupils have come from overseas and while that contributes in the way of tuition fees it's actually parent donations which really make a, a big difference to the college's income and um, unlike the UK where providing donations to secondary education tends to be not quite the done thing, overseas it's very different and as a result the cafe that you were in and certain others of our buildings have been enabled by donations from parents in Russia, in America and in other places and as a result um, we are therefore a major exporter for Brighton and Hove. We also are opening up schools overseas. We opened our first one in September in Abu Dhabi to a record intake of 580 children. Uh, that will generate significant income for us here at the college which we will then invest in the local economy through jobs and through building programs providing facilities for the pupils here. Um, it's interesting that our um, efforts and our uh, our, our success in the academic realms have led to a lot of interest from overseas governments and so we are being asked to set up schools in a number of locations and as we go around and look at those locations it becomes clear that the level of investment in overseas education is significantly greater than here in the UK and so in order for us to keep abreast of the world uh, economy in the future we need to ensure that our facilities here in the UK at least match those of schools overseas and so a lot of our program at the moment is about ensuring that the facilities here can rival any of those that we see around the world which is not easy when there's no government support. We've also got investors uh, courting us in other territories and at the moment we're considering um, five um, locations as being serious overseas potential future locations for Brighton College. So you will find if you go to Abu Dhabi you will see Brighton College crest loud and proud in the middle of the desert. And I was out there over the weekend, I've still got some sand on my shoes because we were looking at another site. Part of the Council's plan is in sustainable development. We've worked very hard to try to save um, gas usage here over the last three years since I've been here, and we've managed to re reduce it by about 40%. We're looking at boreholes to service our north and western flanks. Over 50% of, uh, of our pupil cycle walk or come in on public transport or buses that we ourselves run and so we think that's the highest percentage of any other local school but we are committed to trying to keep the numbers down although I would say the road safety around this area is not good and I know that's also part of the, the council's plan for the future. Um, there also seems to be something in the, um, the council's plan about reducing the carbon footprint. Now I, I think we've done quite well to get 40% off um, if you're faced with listed buildings with crittle windows, there's a limit as to how much gas you might save, but if the council wants to weigh up the heritage part of its agenda with the carbon footprint part of its agenda, you may find that Brighton College suddenly doesn't look like it does at the moment with beautiful terracotta framing, but we have white UPVC instead. But um, we'll debate that with the council in due course. Celebrating heritage and encouraging sport and culture is what we're about. The buildings that we're putting up, we want to ensure are contemporary. Our original founders' vision was to have the best of British architecture. That's entirely what we're about as well. That's what we want to celebrate. And so we want it to, to be in keeping with our listed environment, but also to function as the best of today's facilities for children anywhere around the world. We are looking at completing the quad which was a part of the original founders' vision. Now the interest in the UK education is so great, we want to put a, a boarding house on the site to complete the quad. That will generate between one and two million pounds for the local economy. And so I hope we'll be able to do that in the timescales that we want, uh, but watch that space. We're also putting in a new music school and theatre. Sports Pavilion will be completed in the next month down at our new ground. It's called the new ground because we acquired it in 1936. 
Um, so we work marginally slower than some of the council offices. And we have a health and fitness centre that we're putting up. Oh, that's a bad thing to say, wasn't it? Uh, health and fitness centre that we're sorry, Martin. Health and health and fitness centre that we're putting up um, also uh, on this site. Um, we try to, to ensure that our children are engaged in the community, and these are pictures of where we're mentoring in other schools, helping the elderly, helping the blind, um, and we have a Wednesday program of community outreach to ensure that our children actually are actively aware of some of the privileges that they have, but are also engaged with the community. So generating future investment in Brighton is not just what the council's about, it's also what we're about. But actually, that's not really what we're about. That's, what, that's a byproduct, really, of what we do here. And what we're really about is Brighton investing in future generations. So Brighton will be successful, I've no doubt, but it, it starts here in these sorts of establishments, educating our children with the best equipment, with the best teachers, and equipping them for tomorrow's world is what we do, and that is how we think we serve the, the city best. We have a phrase that uh, the headmaster uses, and that is that um, we don't want children to be carbon copies of anybody else. One of, uh, one of the parents that came in to the school not that long ago said to our registrar, what does a Brighton College child look like? And she responded, well, what does your child look like? And she said, well, I went to X school. I won't name the name. I went to X school. They could tell me exactly what their child looked like. And she said, look, we're not aiming to change your child. We're aiming to educate, develop your child. That is your child. We don't aim to change them. We don't aim to spray paint them, rebadge them. If I'm like him, who will be like me? We also want our children to leave here having a full awareness of what it is to be uh, engaged with the world in which they live. So we want them to be curious. We want them to be confident to tackle the challenges and we want them also to be kind. And one illustration of that for me was at Sports Day last year when uh, one runner was about 200 metres behind everyone else on an 800 metre run. I had every sympathy with him. In fact, I empathised entirely with him because that would have been me uh, a few years ago. Uh, we certainly I'll be 400 metres behind today. Um, but as he was running and as everyone else had finished, the children that had finished turned around and applauded him as he ran that last 200 metre stretch. And I, I thought that's, for me, that symbolised what it is we are trying to achieve here in the college. That is a very important part of what we're about. But it is about Brighton today, and you know the other thing that we want our children to understand is that they are a part of society and not apart from it. And that is entirely how we try to deliver our education, and we really hope that this evening uh, is one of the ways that we can demonstrate that level of engagement. So we're very proud to be in Brighton. We're, we unashamedly mark it by using pictures of the pier and other parts. Um, children are drawn to uh, the college because of the environment that is provided here in Brighton and its urban um, and cosmopolitan feel. So uh, we like to ensure that we are entirely engaged with that when we mark it, so we're proud to be in Brighton. And we very much hope that you feel proud that we are here as part of Brighton. That's all I'd like to say. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Rob, who will be delivering Brighton's view for the, uh, of how it will develop in the next few years. But thank you once again for coming, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, so many were able to make it this evening.